Kent Hovind went on a live uh, stream yard broadcast sort of like this with some other folks. And, and he said things along the lines of me being dishonorably discharged from the military for being a psychopath. And uh, yep, it, I, I know you guys see that face because it's so unbelievable. This is a man right here who served alongside me. I'd like to welcome my friend here by the square. We, uh, we go back. So this is Trey. Uh, we were battle buddies. We went to Iraq together. We served this country in, uh, in the military. We were both 11 Bravo. And Trey, I just want to start off by saying thank you for your service. Well, I, appreciate I, I, I know you put in work for this country. Um, and, and everybody should you know, show him a little love for that, if nothing else. But uh, I asked you here, Trey, because speak your mind about what you know about me. You know, I think it's important that people hear from somebody else that's not me that was in the service with me that can speak to my character. During my time in deployment with you, I would say you was a model soldier, uh, squared away, uh, always did what you was told, um, very well knowledgeable with your task, good at performing tasks. We were in the sandbox together, and uh, I, I never known you to ever turn down a mission to go outside the wire. Uh, every time there was a mission coming up, you were chalk running, you know, running whatever, you know, convoy escorts and whatever stuff we had to do. You were there at every training exercise. Um, never seen you get in trouble. Now I got in trouble. It's just funny that that you know people that know me can say, "Wow, that that claim, that accusation that was brought against me is just so absurd." Well, uh, you can uh, actually, if you wanted to, you can like you know block out you know your personal information like your your social and stuff like that. But post your DD two fourteen where it shows your your discharge date and where it'll say armable. Sure. What I understand about Kenneth, from what I gather about him, uh, he's a great deceptor. Mm -hmm. he, he's really good at deceiving folks. And that's pretty much how he's built what he has through deception. He's, He's not a man of great character himself. It's a shame because the man does know how to articulate. Yeah. And when it comes to uh, talking about creation and proving that God exists, the way he argues is, you know, is there is outstanding. But when you start finding out the the, the real nature of Mark Stoney he used to work here, you know, he got kicked out of the military for being, you know, loony, and he is loony. We sent him from, he's gone. The guy is certifiably insane. One of the guys that left here got kicked out of the military because he was crazy. He's still crazy. Crazy and verifiably insane, you say. And yet you made him a trustee of CSE. That doesn't make sense. Hey, Mark, Brother Hoven here. Uh, Paul told me that you're trustee of the old CSE Ministry Trust also. Can you get a hold of Peter before he leaves? He was at the house, at Paul's house, when Eric and those eight other people came and stole the trailer. So if Paul wants you to get a police report ASAP. That had to be today while uh, Paul is still here. So if you can meet the sheriff over there at Paul's house on 84 and have Peter there and fill out a report, uh, give the description of the trailer and all that stuff, um, and so it reported as stolen. Okay, thank you, brother. Bye. Hey, Mark, Brother Hoven here. Uh, Paul told me that you're trustee of the old CSE Ministry Trust also. Hey, Zayo, Zay, let me ask you a very personal question. When Chris touched you with the paper towel, what was the reason that he done it? What was the reason he touched you with the paper towel? All right. Did he touch you on your genital, meaning penis, with the paper towel? He did. And you don't know why. Was your clothes on or were they off when he touched you with the paper towel? He pulled what down? My Did he say why? 
watching you. All right, yeah, we'll go through with this. I sure will. Because you shouldn't put my, and you heard this from my child. Mm -hmm. right. You heard? Yep. And there's no explanation to why you pulling my son's pants down. Did anything happen while you were at Dino Land? No, if he did anything, I just woke up telling you. Woke up did you? Feeling weird. Did you hear my son? Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, I I will go through. I will be going through with whatever the authorities need. If you do a search on my channel for the word moron, you will find a recording Kent Hovind calls Zaire a moron for pressing charges against Chris Jones. You will see several damning playlists. Jack Hiles and Kent Hovind display the same tactics of abuse of power. It's a cover-up MO. There is another playlist called Chris Jones Pedophile, one of several pedophiles Kent Hovind says are innocent. Kent Hovind covers for four, maybe five pedophiles. Hey brother, Kent Hovind here. Uh I just got a call from Steve Bolin, uh, claiming that Zaire is uh, pressing charges against Chris. This whole drama is never going to quit, brother. Just completely ignore him. They don't get a bunch of morons. Anyway, call if you need me. Thanks, brother. Bye. Well, would you like me to make a bed for him in the man cave? Dr. Hovind said no. I'm going to put him in the house next door. So there you have it. The reason for why Kent is lying about and trying to defame Mark Stoney. Stoney was a driving force behind the search for the kid. Kent knew that if they find the kid, things will be brought up to light, and he sure didn't want that. If everything were fine and dandy, he shouldn't have no problem with giving them contact information and settle it once and for all. Instead, he resisted and went on the offense. Kent knew that if Jones was busted, the visit to DAL will be brought up. Trash talking and throwing blame on others is futile. So you can stop with the lies, Kent.